it's an indie comedy uh, and it's about two people who are kind of both going through a kind of difficult time in their lives, an older guy in his mid-50s and a girl who's uh, in her early 30s and they both ended up somewhere they don't want to be and they meet up uh, for a day in a town by the seaside. They're very opposite characters in lots of ways and there's a lot of reasons why they wouldn't end up hanging out together but they do and uh, they get on well and they manage to kind of help each other out and so it's a kind of uh, yeah pretty traditional indie film in some ways it's just um, people you know walking talking uh, very character based and are hopefully funny but I can't be the person to say that so have to see it and find out. It came about through Max and I you know loving feature film and wishing that we could make one one day uh, the movie is, in a way, about uh, sort of not wasting your life and making and making decisions in order to, you know, get out of ruts. And we were going through one of those ourselves a bit. And we went to the pictures and saw a particular movie called In Search of a Midnight Kiss that's shot very, very low budget. And it dawned on us that we could probably achieve something along those lines. Uh, and so we started thinking about what sort of movies we liked and what sort of film we'd like to make. Uh, and then we, and that's really where it was born out of. Uh, very challenging in every way actually, I mean the location is obviously key to that, uh, I mean I think actually the biggest restriction with low budget is time, but we got given so much by the people of Folkestone that if we'd shot anywhere else in London it, we wouldn't have even got a day done I don't think, and it plays a very key role in that we wanted it to be set by the coast and by the ocean, but we wanted it to be somewhere that didn't really look or feel familiar to anyone, something that people would ask questions about where it was uh, and it's it's really as much of a character as anyone else in the film. So Rob as I'm sure you might be aware was uh, scouted by a model agency at the age of 55 or 52 even in London Fields and we saw him in a print campaign that a friend of ours had shot and we were blown away by his appearance and so uh, we were looking for a character in his 50s and it just seemed like a really great fit. The trouble with trying to find an actor in that, that age bracket is that they've either made it or there's a reason they haven't made it. So trying to discover someone was really our only route. And he brought so much to it that we couldn't have hoped for better. Nora was a very different approach in that she, uh, we, were, we were casting European and the, the net was thrown all over the continent really. Uh, but our associate producer on the project managed to get a script to her. She's a very big deal in, in uh, Germany. Like, we had no idea, I hadn't heard of her really. Uh, and she read the script and she loved it and we Skyped with her and had a quick chat and she in many ways just embodies the character, the kind of, uh, the sort of, uh, just the vibrance of that, that character was really her and we knew straight away and, and she just came on board. One of the things we first saw about Rob was the way he looked. We saw him from a photographic campaign. Um, and the character comes from a place where looking like that is very kind of helpful to us, I think, to sort of, because your relationship with him starts off in one way and ends up in another. And the way Rob looks, which is very dramatic, it's quite moody, uh, very cool. Um, actually, as a guy, he's a very warm guy, he's a lovely guy. So when we met him, it was a nice sort of, contrast between the way he looks and the way he is and that was really helpful to the character because we could kind of draw that out of him as the film went on really um, or in fact her character draws that out of him uh, and for Melanie the female character it's obviously important that she was pretty um, uh, because you know the uh, you kind of relate to her in a different way I think if she's kind of visually attractive from the start so that was kind of you know one thing and then uh, I don't know if we looked for someone iconic looking, we were more looking for a kind of personality and a charisma. And as Mikey said, that's what Nora's kind of got in spades. I think uh, we never really had a really strong idea about how Melanie should look. It was more that um, she would have this kind of energy about her and sort of screen uh, presence, which uh, Nora's absolutely got. So yeah, that was really that. Personally, I really like having someone to field ideas with and, and uh, garner their opinion because a lot of the time I think a director's biggest job is to just is to is to have a kind of filter for what's not good and sometimes when you're very close to an idea like you think of it yourself you really don't know that totally and so being able to ask someone that is uh, it's got so much worth to me and uh, I don't, I actually find it quite amusing that people think of it as being that 
uh, unorthodox. I think um, it's definitely for me the only way to work at the moment. Yeah, that thing of having someone to kind of bounce ideas off, like almost anything you do in your life is really nice to kind of do it in a little team. And um, even and when things are going badly as well, it's really nice to have someone who's invested in something in exactly the same way that you are. Which even if you've got a producer who's very creative and, and all those things, their role is slightly different. And for us to be able to be always coming from the same place and when a good thing happens, you want to sort of share that. And when a bad thing happens, you can share that as well. Is, a, is an invaluable thing. I mean, directing's... For us anyway, or I, I think we found it on this film, you know, hard work and, and brilliant, but um, a long, strenuous process. And so to be able to sort of share that is a really valuable thing. The only real risk for me is doing it in a duo is that you run the risk of relying on the other person for assurance that it's good, but not actually asking them about that. So if I'm worrying about something not being quite right, but Max isn't saying anything, then I assume that it must be good because he's being quiet, but actually all along he's thinking exactly the same as I am. So you end up with this idea. So it's, it's very important to keep the, you know, the conversation going, yeah, keep, vocalizing. keep vocalizing it all the time. Yeah. yeah. I hope they enjoy it. I hope, that actually, they, I hope they walk out of it with a smile on their face, which is always the intention for the movie for us, is that we didn't want to, you know, British movies have this, I think there's quite a lot of them that have a social realist angle that is quite gritty and it's quite hard hitting and those movies are great but we really wanted to make one with more of a, a, a sort of American indie sensibility where it would be making a serious point but having a laugh doing it so I hope that people would leave feeling like they had fun.